PlayStation 4 Pro uh, NVG001. Uh, we have a ripped off uh, 5 volt connector. And I'll give you a microscope view of that. There's tech damage, unfortunately, but these things do happen. So, what we have to do is we're going to have to clean up this connector, pull all these pads off, and then we're going to have to run jumpers for this connector. And then we'll have to uh, scrape off and see if we can bridge some solder over to the uh, anchor points on the connector. And then we'll also probably reinforce with some uh, hot snot. So that's the plan. In the meantime, I think we will get my phone away from my translator. In the meantime, I think we will throw up our temperatures and get while I get my equipment running. I don't expect to use the hot air very much, and I'm not sure if I'm going to use my big WXP120 much, but those will be all the temperatures I would use if we do. I'll flip everything on just in case. We'll definitely be using the Pico Pencil and the Micro Pencil. I anticipate. Okay, first thing I want to do is clean off this connector. So let's put that somewhere. I'm or less likely to lose it. Throw some flux on it. Now I better get y'all back to a place where you can actually see. Otherwise you'll have to use your imagination. Not near as fun as watching the video, I must say. In my opinion. All right. Scrap the micro pencil. Attempt to remove those pads using it. Get off my connector. You are no more use to us. Trying to be careful not to damage anything while I do this. This one's being playing hard to get. There we go. Challenge. Let's see if we can get this flipped over to a point where we can hold All right, 
do the cleaned up connector. Put it aside and cover it up so that we do not flip it off somewhere into the ninth dimension, as a certain other YouTuber likes to say. All right, now we gotta start thinking about these. Oh my goodness, 10 million freaking thermal pads. that I do not need in my collection. Alright. Right. So let's grab an exacto. See which one we will be using today. A lot of times it just depends on how tough it is to scrape. I think I want to scrape back in the more secure area, so I may just end up breaking off this loose stuff. Cutting off this loose stuff. It isn't going to be very useful to us. Let's try my 3D. Do not want to put up more. It's tougher than I thought. All right. So if it wants to be stubborn. We can always secure it down with formal coat. Alright, so I'm going to need my more abrasive. Scraper. I want to scrape all the way back here. There we go. It's finally out of the freaking thing to go off. I'm going to have to come at this this way. It's scraping around that big connector is a little bit of a challenge.
Alright. That should be good. Now we have to think about the grounds. Grab the connector so I can see what that's going to entail. Okay, this shouldn't be too terrible to bridge over. Shouldn't be too terrible to bridge over, but we'll give ourselves lots of room to work. I could also copper tape this if I wanted to. And bridge the solder over to the tape. That's an idea too. Jobs like this are a great time to do a little bit of experimenting. It's already screwed up, you know. Either way, we are going to have to add solder because I wouldn't want to just trust the tape. We'd have to solder the tape down. All learning, all experimenting. Okay, sorry I got interrupted and I just decided to go ahead and eat lunch while I was <clears throat> had the break. So let's get back to this. We are getting to the point where we want to solder down our tape. All right, continue with our work for the, all right, so I'll just have to remember to put these thermal pads on later. I'm sure I'm going to end up with them all in my bag when I go to deliver this thing. All right. Hopefully they are putting new ones on. So let's tin up these. And we'll run some jumper wire. I am not using tape on this. Okay, that middle one there is ground, but we might as well run it anyway. It's not that big a thing to do so. Alright, so jumper wire. Let's look at gauges. 
Let's see what I want to use. I can double these over. Then secure them down. Or I could run more than one. Well, I don't want to run more than one. I might actually go with the thicker wire for this one. And finally into it. Let's take a look at it. That'll be more proper size. Yeah, we may double it. We'll loop it around, secure it down, and then we might even be able to get some uh, a solder blob in the loop. That will be our approach, I think. All right, snap off a bit to use. Um, I'm gonna want my eye kneesies and these 3D ones for that. And now we're gonna grab our Pico pencil and tin those pad, and then we'll run the wire. See if I can get you guys a little better focus on this part of the job. We'll flatten those down later. Right now I want a nice big blob for getting the wire on there. All right. I'm going to run it out a little bit so that we can have room to secure it with the conformal coat. One thing I don't like about this wire is it doesn't uh, burn quite as easy. I think we may have to pre tin <clears throat> Not a big deal. We will be using the big iron for this purpose. So we will be using all irons. Make it move. And I put my phone back in my pocket, which is not great. Yeah. Great way to cause interference. Right, now we should be able to get that thing in there.
let's look at the connector. See how it's going to be. So some of those solder blobs are a little bit high still. Let's see if we can smooth them out without causing too much pain. Solder mask. All right, I'm gonna grab my big lamp. And let it cure for a while and then I'll be back. Okay, we're back and we're cured. Let me switch back over to microscope. So what I wanna do now, uh, we'll double check and make sure everything is nice and I think it'll hold up to tinning. We'll find out. So we're going to tin these and put a nice big amount of solder on them if we can. I think for that we will use the micro pencil. I rarely change the temperature of my irons if you've watched any of my videos. Just one of those. Vet, uh, need to turn my fume extractor back on. Definitely. All right. Okay, that's not working out quite like a, that one is doing a little bit better. I don't really care that these are not secured down in the front once they don't come off the other side. Okay, that one is the only one that really worked out the way I wanted. That's okay. I think they'll solder just fine. It's just a matter of... And them being loose is probably better for me right now. <clears throat> Alright. Ripping up my chair. Okay. Let's grab our connector. Just hiding from my clumsiness. Let's 
think what I will try and do first is align it pretty well, and then we're going to, well, we're going to have to get some flux on those ground beds. <coughs> Alright, there we go. We'll tack down one of the ground pads once we have it aligned to the point where we want it where we want it. That's gonna be good. Give me a little further back because I need some access to those wires. A few of them ended up a little too far back. That's all right. Those have big solder balls on them. So I think we'll manage. Okay. Get a nice solder bead on the micro pencil. See if I can hold this in place to a degree. Okay, so I'm not really tight down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think it was tacked down. Now it's tacked down. Alright. We'll go ahead and hit the other side. Grab another bead of solder. more solder on that. There we go. You just climb right up that solder glove. Thank you. feels really solid. I like how that's turning out so far. <clears throat> okay. I think we will try the rest of this with the Pico pencil, but we may have to use the micro pencil. These are big, pretty big legs. So. But the Pico pencil has surprised me many times before. its capabilities. Well, I'm fairly certain that is contacting. With the ground ones, I'm not overly concerned with it, but it is contacting, I believe. Let's peel this off. I do not want that bridge in. Not even just joking about it. All right. Let's take a look. <clears throat> I 
All right, all the wires are moving with it. Let's see if I can get this away. Actually, you know what we may do is just cover all that in conformal coating. I think that would probably be the best plan. Does feel pretty solid, but I might still hit it with some hot snot too. But just to add a little more strength to it. Bring the big lamp back over, uh, cure that, and then we'll add a little bit of hot snot to the sides just to add that little added bit of strength. Okay, I'm reasonably happy with the curing. We're not, we're not trying to necessarily use it for securing uh, the port. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut this guy, try and cut him in half. This is hot snot. Put one side over here. We do not want it to get in the connector, but we do want it to be on the connector, making contact. And I was wrong on all my temperatures and airflow because I am definitely going to turn down the temperature and airflow drastically. So let's see. I want to go down to like 150 degrees C. We do not need to be hot at all for the hot snot. We definitely don't need to be in a range to melt plastic. And then we're going to turn down the air to about, let's go 20%. But anyway, this will be the repair. It's nothing pretty, but there's not really a way to make this repair look pretty. It's solid. It will work. Uh, the power supply will have 5 volt again. And that's the goal. So, Anyway, if you have any questions about the equipment I used in this video, it should be all linked down in the description below. Uh, if you liked this video, hit the like button if you would. And if you would like to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and maybe the notification bell. I really appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.